1972 4620 power shift with factory air conditioned cab. One of about 500 ever built. And it's an original paint. Alrighty guys, we found a few things wrong with this tractor. They're going to be addressing, we're working on the tear down it right now with uh, removing the hood. And to remove the hoods on these, you have to remove a panel up there on the cowl, side screens, air sack, and exhaust pipe. And the side screens are in good shape, but they're getting a little bit rough and they've been discolored on the edges, as you can see here, by some antifreeze leakage as well as the fan shroud. Uh, these radiators are about $1,000, so we're in the debating mode whether to have it rebuilt or replaced. I'm ready to replace this radiator here. But this was one of the very few John Deere's that actually had a hydraulic pump you could get to from the top. Uh, bolts here and down here. And of course, your coupler in there. But that's because the uh, front axle had the steering cylinders in here versus a steering motor, like most of the other models used. Well, as you can see, the 4620s is all tore apart here in the shop. Had a leaky radiator. When we went to put take the radiator out, we found hoses bad, uh, piping bad, all sorts of things in there. Uh, your typically used tractor. And if anybody follows this channel, you know I'm a perfectionist and detailist. So anything that was wrong is going to get addressed. Now, this tractor is going to be used on our farm, so I'm not going to restore it. Um, you know, I'm going to clean things up, paint parts as needed, but that's about as far as it's going to go. Uh, otherwise, it is an original paint tractor and it's going to stay that way. I'm going to put a clip of the uh, brochure in here next. Um, in the brochure, they did have 28, uh, 38 tires on these tractors. This one has uh, 18 438s. And I think 18 4 was standard. Uh, 28 38 was also available. Um, the dual rims, there's no tires in the dual rims, there's just dual rims. They're 18 wide, and then these are 16 wide. So somebody's obviously changed something out at some point in time. Now these do have some corrosion uh, back inside on them, a little bit around the valve stem. And on this side, we have a Goodyear. On this side, we have a Firestone uh, Traction Field and Road. This would be actually the tire that this tractor probably would have came out with would have been this uh, tread pattern here. But the reason he had that, the guy that had this was mowing CRP with it. Uh, he didn't farm, he just did some custom uh, mowing. And he said he ran over stuff all the time, so he just threw on used tires for whatever they had. So obviously it needs new rear rubber, and I'm debating as to get 2838s, which will involve replacing these, or to go 18438s and replace the duals. And again, I'll put that in the brochure clip up next, you can see it. Uh, throw in the comments below as to which tire size you would go with. Um, there's kind of some advantages to both, uh, a little cheaper on the 18438s, and that's the way it is sitting right now, and it doesn't look too bad. All the draw bar height's a little bit low, which would come up with the uh, 2838. And I can get either one in this uh, company called CropMax, which actually builds a Firestone 151 lookalike. So we'll have an original tread pattern tire for the tractor. And it does have the 14L161 front tires on it. Uh, some lines and stuff are bad on the engine. Uh, this line here has actually been brazed, and then they had a hose over top of it, which ran from there down to the pump. Now that line uh, I actually was able to get from John Deere still, so I'm, I'm taking that hose and putting it and throwing it away. I'm going to be uh, putting the original line back. And uh, he done hooked the heater, and uh, that's getting hooked back up. And yes, this tractor is going to get used or a loader. So I did get my joystick control mounted here. And uh, the box on there just made a bracket. Made sure everything just bolts on. So if I want to take it back out, keep the tractor original, uh, I can do that as well. Just lots of little things going on here with the engine. Um, kind of crusty looking old thing. Uh, it definitely had an antifreeze leak going on. It's stained some... Some paint and stuff there. And new uh, fan belts and water pump uh, was replaced and several other things. Went to take the muffler off and it was froze on there. Uh, probably the original muffler. Somebody had even beat on it with a hammer before. So uh, ordered a new muffler and uh, just trying to get everything up to par. 
original brochure here shows all the tractor models that were made at that time period. The uh, 116 horsepower 4320. It's a super 4020. Shows it here. And you have to remember that these tractors were measured at the PTO. Observed horsepower at the PTO. Where the modern tractors are observed at the engine. There's the 4620. It goes on here to say rear tires. Ground speeds with the twenty eight thirty eights. I don't know why they're giving a range, but they're, uh, I suppose that means idle to 4 RPM. However, the brochure does list 2200 RPM. And I would assume that this one here in the brochure, I would assume, is 2838s uh, equipped. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Condensers on these tractors was quite different than uh, anything else I've seen John Deere-wise. Uh, it's in a curve here on the top of the roof, and of course this cover goes over it with uh, the two fans. Uh, we pulled the other fan because the motor was froze up. This tractor sat out, and I think the motor got water in it, froze up, and burned up. Uh, this fan seems to operate correctly. Uh, they do a foam ring on here, which would seal against this lid. And this foam ring is uh, it's pretty pretty tough. So we're going to replace the foam rings. Uh, ironically, they show available through John Deere Parts. I did order cab seals from the FAR company, and I was less than impressed as they were cut too long and not even cut straight. But I did make them work. I just got done washing things here, so some splatter came back into the cab. But we did put the, the boots on. I haven't put any floor mat in or anything. Uh, this is a like a heat shrink tape. It's a... Uh, heavy backed uh, foil base tape and it's been laid on the floor just added sound suppression and uh, keeps everything buttoned up a little tighter so that there's no dirt or anything comes to the cab these boots are these are pedal boots and they're individual boots here and then there's a little uh, plug that goes to the floor which i'm waiting on from john deere all that's available from john deere which i was surprised um, these seal really tight to the pedal here as you can tell but that's really what sealed the front of these cabs up uh, good and tight uh, otherwise, there'd be a pretty good size gap there. So, coming together nicely. Uh, got everything cleaned up. As you can see, this block's very, very original. Um, but we're going to leave it that way. Uh, original patina, I guess, and clean is better to me than spray canned or spotchy paint uh, and paint over wiring harnesses and things like that. And again, this is not a full restoration tractor. Uh, this tractor is going to be used on our farm, so we just want to make sure it's up to par 100%, which I try to keep everything as factory original as possible, so I want to do that, but at the same time I want to address a few problematic areas. And while we're standing here looking at the front of this uh, cab, I was going to show you something interesting. This was a, a Henson made cab, and these cabs, and you can see the dash cowl here comes down, and these cabs, the front of the window had this panel went in. It lines right up with the firewall. So then the other panel goes in right over the hood. Everything lines up pretty good and tight. Now, if this was on like a 4320, this cab would be out over the engine a little far, and they had a special side panel that went in behind it. Uh, the same cab got used on the 6030, 4320, 4020. Uh, the only difference in the smaller ones had a little different reel bar, but uh, the cab was used on different models of tractors. So uh, it does fit the smaller ones a little differently. Uh, it fits these. 4620s very very well. And while it's on the subject of basic architecture, uh, these tail lights here are the same as the sound guard body. You can really see the outline of the cab as well as the fenders and the way that the architecture looked to the body. The groundwork is clearly being laid for the sound guard body series. And even the uh, cab recirculation filter or the uh, cab filter is the same as 
the sound guard body the uh, recirculation filter which actually was still available which is just that little foam pad you see there uh, that was available from deer dome light up there is uh, same as a early 30 series but one thing that really gets me to this tractor is the metal I like the bends around the edge your seam lines um, up under your fenders that's original paint and it's very very good so if you're interested in this 4620 and like old tractor series videos or what we're going to be doing to this particular tractor hit the subscribe button and follow along for more because there'll be a whole series of videos coming up on it thanks for watching